It's Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. This is the meeting of the Iroquois County Board. First of all, roll please. Alt. Here. Bard. Here. Barron. Here. Roger. Here. Bowman. Bowers. Yes. Kokenauer. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Ducat. Here. Hughes. Yes. Johnson. Lynch. McGinnis. Yes. McTaggart. Awful. Penny. Here. Sure. Young. Yes. Zumwalt. Present. Okay, today we're pleased to have with us Pastor Terry Shepherd from the Great Bible Church in Sister Park, and it's going to lead us in our prayer. Thank you, John. Good morning, guys. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. This is the day that you have made, and we rejoice in it. God, I pray for this county board today. We recognize that uh, we can only come to you uh, in the name of your son Jesus because of his life and death and resurrection for our sins. And I pray that each of us would have a genuine and personal relationship with you through faith in him. God, I pray for uh, the board as they begin to meet. I pray that they would do so in the humble recognition that all human authority um, is derived from you and given by you, including this very board. God, I pray that uh, you would uh, direct their, their, their deliberations, their discussions, and their decisions so that they would act in a way that is good and pleasing in your sight and in accordance with your will. God, I pray for each man and woman on this board that you would grant them health and peace, harmony and wisdom, that they would blamelessly administer uh, the government of this board for this county. We thank you for their service and we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. 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 And keep your mouth open for what you're saying. One nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I believe everyone has a copy of the agenda in front of them, so we have a motion to approve that. Thank you. That's one day for all. Are there any questions or comments regarding today's agenda? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All the same sign. That motion passes. Everybody with 10 minutes from our April meeting. <coughs> to approve those minutes. Mr. Ducat, is there a second? Mr. Zumo. Are there any questions or comments regarding the April minutes? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All the same sign. That motion passes. Is the payroll. We have a motion to approve the payroll. Mr. Young, seconded by Mr. Barr. Are there any questions or comments regarding payroll? Seeing none, we have to call the roll. Barr? Yes. Barron? Yes. Roger? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Penny? Yes. Sure? Yes. Young? Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay, public comments. Are there any public comments this morning? If none, we'll go on to Chairman's comments. like to let everybody know that tonight uh, Tom Bennett and Jason Berkman are hosting a town hall meeting over in Pontiac at the Pontiac Township High School. The topic of the meeting primarily is what's going on at the Pontiac Correctional Center. If anybody's interested in that meeting, I have some more information on that there. You can see me after the meeting. Next, UCCI and NACO are sponsoring a High Performance Leadership Academy. This is a webinar-based program that our participants won't have to travel to attend. Normally it costs $2,495 a person, so 
and UCCI is underwriting it, so it's free to all participants. There's more details that will be coming soon, but I do have a print out here for anyone interested. And again, you can see me after the meeting. been informed that Mr. Greg Murphy is retiring from his position as regional superintendent of schools effective July 31 and today I'm pleased to introduce to everybody Mr. Frank Pasulis who is currently the assistant regional superintendent of schools. Andy Wheeler, Kenny P. County Board Chairman and I have agreed to appoint him as the replacement for the remainder of Mr. Murphy's term. This will be done formally. We will formally accept Mr. Resignation and appoint Mr. Pakunas at our July board meeting. Uh, today he's here to uh, answer any questions, to introduce, you know, to make his comments. I will also tell you that he's a candidate on the primary ballot of election on June 28th. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Pakunas. He can make his comments and any questions that any of you have. Thank you. Uh, thanks for. Uh, Allowing me to be here. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background on myself, uh, I've been working with Greg in the regional office for 10 years now. Uh, we've been working side by side. Um, we uh, have basically the same philosophies uh, about you know, regional office of education and education in general. Um, we believe that our office is a service uh, agency to our district in the region. And so uh, that's the way we approach uh, the role of the regional superintendent and the regional office of education. Uh, we try to provide the services to the district that they indicate to us that they need while trying to uh, accomplish the, the requirements that are in statute uh, of the regional superintendent and the regional office. Uh, while there are some regulatory uh, requirements, um, we also try to approach those ones in a service oriented service nature, uh, like our health safety inspections at the building. Uh, we try to do those things in a way that allows our districts to manage uh, those kind of requirements and mandates uh, in a way that's uh, well manageable for them. So uh, while there is that component of it, again, we're trying to be in a service oriented. Uh, I've lived in uh, the area for my whole life, uh, grew up in Lomet, uh, live currently in Limestone. Uh, area um, so if you have any questions I'd be glad to answer yes what was the position you were on the primary right you want to speak into your microphone so everybody can hear you thanks I was the example is that better <coughs> so the, the question was what position am I running for in the primary right um, just I didn't hear which position of the primary yeah, that would be for the regional superintendent of schools so Greg's term ends in July or in June of 2023 so he's retiring August 1st um, so the appointment would be for the remainder of his term the um, the, the election for that new term uh, that begins in 2023 will be on the November ballot. So primary is June 28th for that uh, seat. So I'll be running for that position. Um, Thank you. The part of the process uh, and, and the need to uh, ask for the reappointment to take place in July at the July meeting is so that when Greg retires August 1st or July 31st, there's not a gap uh, when Greg took his position, uh, when uh, Kay Pangle retired, there was a, actually a 10 day gap between the time that she retired and he was able to be appointed because it had to happen at the next board meeting. Um, and during that 10 days, everything worked out okay, but during that 10 days, there was nothing that could be signed by the regional superintendent of schools because Kay had resigned and Greg had not been appointed yet. So we're trying to make that transition less questionable because if there was a need for anything to be 
done by the regional superintendent. There's nothing in code that allows for a succession in the event that the regional superintendent leaves unexpectedly. So uh, this appointment uh, and acceptance of resignation in July, effective August 1st, it allows for that transition to happen smoothly. Which is the same process and procedure that we used recently when Chair Fagan resigned and also when Tommy Corson took the answer to the job. There were no gaps in coverage. Anyone else have any questions? Thank okay, thank you. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on with the outside organization reports. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Chairman, members of the Iroquois County Board, yes, I'm Angel Crawford, the new executive director of the with the Iroquois Economic Development Association. Within the last two weeks, I had the pleasure of t attending the annual dinners for both the Iroquois County Chamber of Commerce and the Watsika Chamber of Commerce. The Iroquois County Chamber of Commerce dinner kicked off with a full house at the Long Branch in Laram. President Kyle Leiden spoke about the revamping of their website to make, a more user, make it more user friendly, updating forms for membership renewals, and their Discover Airport County webinar series <coughs> that is featured on their Facebook page that includes their businesses. This will also include future promotional partnership opportunities for local businesses and members. The Watsika Chamber of Commerce's, Commerce's dinner was a sold out event full of fun and laughter. Uh, Executive Director Amanda Hibbs led the evening with drawings, raffles, and silent auction items donated by over 50 businesses within the county. She presented Harbor House with the Watsika Area Chamber of Commerce 2022 Professional Award and announced Carla Waters, who is here today, managing the managing editor of the Times Republic newspaper as the 2022 Staff Achievement Award recipient. All in all, it was a great seeing everyone and to once again be able to meet in person. Both of these chambers provide businesses with ways to network, information to help area business grow, businesses grow, and create a better life for the residents in our community. The Iroquois Economic Development Association looks forward to working together with all the chambers in Iroquois County and to more great events like these. In closing, here's a few updates and reminders. May 12th at 4 p.m., mark your calendars, Watsika Chamber of Commerce is meeting for the Downtown Watsika Spring Beautification Day. If you'd like to help, volunteers can meet at Santa's house next to the dome to help plant flowers and beautify the downtown Watsika area. May 13th and 14th, the Iroquois Chamber of Commerce is helping to promote Gilman Townwide Garage Sales, and we've all seen that, like you know, recently all the different towns are doing this. This is really great for communities to come together and help out, you know, in a small way, but also in a great way. It really is a way to reach out. So you can pick up max, maps at the local businesses in Gilman. June 3rd, this is the deadline for the Painters District Council Number 30 grants. The first one's called the Patch Foundation Grant, and it's a financial assistance grant to develop or enhance a community program for children. The other grant is called the Community Partnership Grant. It helps nonprofits with, the renov with renovation projects that will make a difference within their community. You can call 630-377-2120 for more information. And I do know that um, when I did announce this at the past meetings, that there were already nonprofits that were interested in working with this. And it's just great that all the uh, different organizations are reaching out to, to help small nonprofits do what they do. June 11th, another marker calendar, Nichols Paint and Fab will have their grand opening of their new facility on the corner of Route 1 and Route 
24. There will be lots going on that, that day, and I hope everybody shows up. Air Point County Public Health Department has the Emergency Senior Services Program. You've probably seen this in the paper, but it's very good to reach out to people to let them know. It's still available to all Iroquois County residents age 60 or older who are in need of essential care items such as food, medical supplies, or personal hygiene products. You can call the health department at 432-2483 for more information. And of course, last time we, or in the last meetings, I've talked about the Affordability Connectiv Connectivity Program. This is another program that can help a little bit of a lot. It's still available and it's for eligible households looking for assistance to lower their internet bill. The benefit could provide a discount for up to $30 a month. You can go to www.fcc.gov forward slash ACP to find out more information. And last but not least, the Illinois Emergency Homeowner Assistance Fund Program, so it's called ILHAF. This is still available and eligible for homeowners for grants up to 30,000 in assistance to help eliminate or reduce past due mortgages or property tax payments. You can go to www.illinoishousinghelp.org or forward slash ILHAF for more information. For additional questions on any of this on any of these topics, you can call our office, the Airport Economic Development Association at 815-432-0072. We're always here to help. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for Angel? Seeing none, can I ask Angel to come forward and report this one? with the board, county board last night. Uh, the first time I gave them a ton of stuff, some flyers, my business card. Um, so I'm hoping that moving forward, I'll have more people to actually report their projects as well. Out of 34 people on the CAPO, I have three still on the board. Um, so that's what's wrong with that. Um, in terms of the youth on the CAPO, I've got new work experiences at Riverside and their IT department, furniture production, design, Silver Brothers Concrete out of Clifton, um, IMH, and I'm currently working on two kids that have not had their set up yet, so we'd ideally like it in the construction. Um, I contacted IPC, I have not heard back yet, so if you know of any construction company that would be willing to take on an unpaid internship or two what Tika kids, let me know. Um, I'm also waiting to hear back from Chrysler if they're interested in taking me with them if there's an automotive. Um, in terms of adults, I've had one client really complete an RN program, move to California, start working um, as an RN at a hospital, she now makes $54 an hour. She was a single mom with three kids who was low income before and now she needs to take care of her kids, so that's fantastic. Um, I've also got a client that recently recently obtained a CPO. Um, he is out of taxes. He was previously unemployed and he recently got a job with FedEx. Um, and I've got five students lined up for the CNA class at the South Extension Center, um, three of which are low income, two of which have been laid off in the last six months. Um, right now we're helping with their tuition, books, CDs, uniforms. They have shoes that are specific to the required for the course. They have a watch that they have to purchase that is specific to the required. Um, they have to get a drug screen, a physical background check, and we're paying for all of it. So it's quite a bit of money, but like I said, we've had one lady that was getting a out of time student when she worked in another one. Um, I also met with IFS in Gibson City and toured their plant. They do a lot of sorting and stuff. Um, and we are helping them with <coughs> on the job training. So right now they put in a lot of money for their employees, and instead of that continuing to be a cost for them, we are helping pay for that cost so they can do it towards their training. So, if you guys have any questions? I'm glad you've been pretty busy. Yes, I've been very busy. That's good. <laughs> I 
Are there any other outside organization reports this morning? Seeing none, we'll move on to the committee reports. <laughs> Members of the county board, <coughs> your committee to whom must refer policy and procedures prepared leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on April 28, 2022 at 9 a.m. Members present were Sure, Barron, Hall, Bard, and Hoffa. Michael McTaggart was absent. Also present Finance Manager Joe Johnson, County Clerk Leanne Silver, Sheriff Transfer Z, ETS Director Eric Raymond, and Mitchell Bent. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Alpo and seconded by Bard to approve the agenda. That motion was carried by a roll call vote. There were no public comments. Committee chairs gave their monthly reports. Management Chairman Barron reported the Management Committee will receive an update on the filing project and continue discussion on the Animal Control Building. The Judicial Committee will hear their standard report. Health Chairman Alpo reported the committee will hear their regular reports from the health department and animal control. Tax planning and zoning chairman Bard reported the department heads will give their reports. Finance committee will take action on the electronic recycling event and with the city of Wasika. Highway chairman all reported the highway committee will review their standard reports and take action on an agreement for bridge and recycling. County Board Chairman Schur opted to hold today's meeting in the newly renovated employee break room, which also substitutes as an alternate meeting room. Discussion was held on security at the Administrative Center. County Clerk Brian Silver is moving forward on some security measures following the Department of Homeland Security assessment. A panic alarm system is also being implemented for the Highway Department, Courthouse, and Administrative Center. The alarm will go directly to the deputy radio. An application for the American Rescue Plan Act the committee will be submitted. Silver is having a key fob entry system installed today on the clerk's employee door and the election room door. The purchase of the server will already be taken care of, and other key fobs can be added to the server. The doors can also be placed on a timer to lock and unlock a certain time each day. Last month, the policy and procedure committee set salaries for the elected officials. To inform the committee, an amendment has been made setting the sheriff's salary at 80% of the annual salary of the state attorney. In addition, 66 and two thirds of the sheriff's salary is reimbursable by the state. It was moved by Bard, seconded by Awful, to rescind resolution 2022-17 that was passed on April 12, 2022. That motion carried by a voice vote. It was moved by Awful and seconded by Alf to pass a resolution setting the salary of the Iroquois County Sheriff. A roll call vote was taken and that motion carried. Finance Manager Jill Johnson gave an update on the sexual harassment training, stating the training will begin in June. An in-person training will be held in the boardroom as well as online training. The committee discussed taking action on the holiday calendar to follow state law and close the county offices for the Juneteenth holiday. This year, June 19th falls on a Sunday and will be recognized on Monday, June 20th. It was moved by Barron's and seconded by Bard to amend the holiday calendar to include all offices for the Juneteenth holiday. A roll call vote was taken. Barron's aye, all's aye, Bard aye, awful aye, sure aye. Motion carried. It was moved by Barron's and seconded by awful to enter into executive session at 9.40 a.m under 5 ILCS 120-2-C1, the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body. 
My motion carried by a voice vote. It was moved by Barron and seconded by Barton to come out of executive session at 10.08 a.m. That motion carried by a voice vote. Appointments include a possible appointment to the 377 board. There is also searching for someone to serve on the Iroquois Memorial Hospital Board for a two-year term. I would like the candidate to be active on the board, well-versed in finance and management, and outside of the Watsika area. Correspondence was distributed to the committee. A check was received from UCCI the first quarter meeting attendance. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by all from the second by all to pay the claims subject to county board approval. The roll call vote was taken. That motion carried. During old business, Bard reported the broadband company that has been working in Wasika did not seek approval through the city before beginning their work. During new business, Barron said he would like to see the incoming board members receive an orientation. Here said new board members should also receive the book provided by UCCI and a PDF copy of the county code book. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Halt and seconded by Bard to adjourn at 10.31 a.m. That motion carried by a voice vote. All of this is respectfully submitted and signed by all members present, and I move for the adoption of the report. Is there a second? Mr. Curtis seconds. Are there any questions or comments on the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Barron? Yes. Bodger? Yes. Bauer? Yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Ducat? Yes. 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 Yes.
Curtis? Yes. Recap? Yes. Hughes? No. McGinnis? Yes. Penny? Yes. Sure? Yes. Young? Yes. Dumont? Yes. Alt? Yes. Bard? Yes. Barron? Yes. Roger? Yes.
there was no old business, there was no new business, that there was no further business coming before this meeting, it seems like you talked about everybody closed to adjourn at 9 a.m. most of the day. All this is accepted and submitted. I move for its adoption. I have a motion on the floor to approve the report of the management committee. Is there a second? Mr. Powell. Mr. Gary? Yes. I'd like to pull out some special discussion on the independent action committee uh, paragraph.
completely dedicated. It's not, the trees are not planted, so no, it's not completely dedicated. Are there any other questions or comments? Mr. Crow. Um, I have, did, did we make a decision about a better system on the filing of the documents in the courthouse? I can't remember exactly what we decided to do. Talk to Lisa or what? Right. Just to do the talk, talk to her. So. Uh, I spoke to Lisa in judicial, and they actually are already on computer files. They, they are on computer already. So the, the hard copies are down there, but they are actually online yeah. or in a computer so how you access them i don't know but lisa would be able to yeah lisa would be able to access that stuff on her computer so if not if, if nothing else so they have been digitalized well that that makes me feel a lot better but I'm just wondering generally, since as a county board member, we didn't know that. How, how do we know that information? How do we know that? I, I'm not sure why they didn't tell you that when you were requesting it, but I guess you got to ask the right person the right question. Are there any other questions or comments on the management committee report? Okay, next next item on the management committee is a discussion <coughs> and action on a memorandum of understanding between Iroquois County and the William Joda Crabtree Trust and Jane E. Crabtree Trust regarding parcel number 
you know, just so we can kind of get an idea of what this project is going to cost. Uh, we really don't have any idea at this point. So, uh, I, you know, I know we're still working on the details, but, uh, but as far as what we need to do, we know what we need to do, and uh, I think it's we can put it out to get it. Well, I guess I, my personal feeling is I probably would agree that there's merit in trying to find out what the cost of the project might be, but the way costs are changing in this day that we're in right now, I don't know how useful that information is going to be. To me, if we're going to put it off of this, I'd rather we approach it with the idea that we want to go ahead and get the work done. That way we can lock the prices in if we're we believe prices are going to keep going up. It would be to our advantage to try and get the work done at the lowest price we can, we can possibly get. So that would be one reason for putting it out to bid right here at this time. In addition to the fact that the work needs to be done, which we've already established. Is that correct? Oh, yes, yes. But I guess what I'm saying is <coughs> what would we gain by delaying if we go if we go out for bid, what would we what would we gain by delaying accepting the bid and authorizing the work to be done? Well, uh, it's always been our contention all along to get the men to understand it together before we put it out for bid. Uh, we really uh, I don't think there'll be a problem uh, getting permission across through this land. We do the tiling work on our land. We don't need to put up his land, do we? Yes, we do. Got to get to the bids. Is there currently a tile there? Yes. Um, yes, but I'm not entirely sure of the size. It's not very good. Um, uh, so, you know, I think. So you're, you're, you're saying then that we're going to to put the tiling in on his land and pay for all of it ourselves? That's kind of the way it's working. Well, I don't think we have the funds to do that. I'm not even sure that uh, we haven't approached that question with the state's attorney to find the legality of doing tiling work on someone else's land. That would be a bad precedent. Okay. Highly recommend against it. I have noted several instances where people have paid put their name through someone else's land and because of that, you know, it's got to be done. You've got to have drainage and you kind of got to do it at whatever cost it's going to be. Uh, uh, the other people aren't going to benefit all that much by the same thing that the number of acres is about 20 million. Under the out water is not very good, it's been bubbling up even this spring. And, uh, so, I mean, if we're going to continue to, to get high rents and price rents for this farm land that we own, uh, we've got to provide tile and we've got to get to the bids to get the water. I, I, guess, I guess I understand all that. In my mind, again, the issue though is the part about someone else's property. The bid, the bid request that we have already put together only covers our land. It doesn't cover anyone else's land. That, that's kind of what is on the agenda here is doing a thousand acres on our land. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's my understanding. So, so we're what was your motion again? Uh, my motion was, or was to table this until next week. <coughs> so I can I get it to work out the fine details, commission, establish the parameters of you know, what the owner will pay for and what he's not paying for. Uh, it's hard to get a hold of when he's the vague guy for each time. I'm supposed to hand this kind of 
I can only speak for myself, but I think it might be difficult to get this board, especially with the state's attorney and the vice to earmark any money for the highly emotional criminal. I guess at this point, we, we need to know whether or not we we need to know whether or not we've got an outlet for the water to go no forward with the project. It's like this table that we go, we find out that there is an outlet for the water. There's an outlet there right now. Is there not? Yeah, they, there's an old pile that Sergeant Route 1 was to be. The whole idea would have replaced it because it's breaking down. <coughs> I understand that, but if we re if we replace the tile on our land and hook onto the tile that exists on Mr. Crabtree's land, what's going to happen? Is the, uh, the water going to come through, and if his tile fails, it's going to bubble up on his land? Yes, very close to that. Well, what what what, what condition will that create? He can't sue us for that, can he? I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't either. It might just, I mean, uh, if a condition like that occurs, it might motivate him to agree to do something. Well, I can use that as a bargain to get somebody to cut it off somehow. To me, we, we have to decide how we're going to approach it. If we need to decide how we're going to approach it, that might be a good reason to send it back to me. I mean, I'm, the main reason for, for <coughs> having on the agenda today was that if, if we had all of our, uh, you know, that I, I thought it in peace for us that we could maybe get the work done during a so called off season for the tribal contractors and get them at a better price. If we can't do that, then yeah, we've got to get it done right. So if you want to send it back to the committee, that's fine with me. I don't know if anybody else here has any other thoughts other than that. We do do something. Uh, use the mic, would you please? Uh, one thing, you can put a solid pile on his property. So that's one way. You might think, well, my parents are benefits, so they've got a better grade. How much have we told the city that we'd be laying the meeting on Mr. Crabtree? Uh, it'd be about that. considering a larger tile and asking him to put in a larger tile as well, that we'd be feeding, if we put in our larger tile, it'd be going into a smaller tile. This tile is smaller. Yes, uh, the original bid was for a 15 or an 18, and I think the one they put on there is a 12. But that could be done. We could do our section, hook into that, smaller size. That could be done. Yes. Uh, although that it would probably bottom back to the ground green. The green is another really the size of the outlet. Right. That that it could back up on our ground in our new tile as well. Yes. Do you have a motion or you, what do you want? Or are we just going to send it back? I think we just agree to send it back to the committee. Okay. Yes, sir. No 
move on to the health committee, Mr. Bard. <coughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom is referred held would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the administrative center on April 5th, 2022 at 9.01 a.m. Members present, present were awful far and courage. Both an hour and lunch were absent. Also present County Board John Schur, Finance Manager Johnson, and ICPHD's Administrator Pippin. It was. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Lord and seconded by Curtis to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Curtis and seconded by Lord to take the funding subject to the County Board approval. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. There were no public comments. ICPHD Administrator D. Shipper expressed her gratitude to the Animal Control Department for the excellent job they are doing and how timely they respond to cases. Shipper gave an update of COVID-19, reported that there were 49 new cases in April. Many people are doing home testing now. Shippers said these tests are able to be entered into their system and grant money is still available to assist with groceries and household items for those quarantined or in isolation. There have been a total of 7,222 <coughs> cases and 132 deaths associated with COVID-19. COVID-19 vaccination statistics are as follows. 48.77% of the Fort County is fully vaccinated. Ages 5 to 11, 11.41%. Ages 12 to 17, 31.13%. Ages 6, 18 to 64, 53.64%. 65 plus, 81.22%. Shippers reported the Health Department's prompt comprehensive grant bundle for $104,000 has been written, submitted, and approved. Shippers reviewed the summer report of grant programs of the committee. Shippers discussed the farmer's market bill that was co-sponsored by Representative Tom Bennett. A public hearing will be held to discuss fees for those involved with farmers' market. Shipper will take a recommendation to the Board of Health for their decision. The fees cannot extend, exceed $175. Lastly, Senior Services is currently serving 189 clients. Grant funding is available for individuals 60 or older. Finance Manager Jill Johnson reported that there were 18 closed cases in April, which includes six owners found, six owners in three wealthy requests, three well dogs, two lost dogs, and one dog running loose. We currently have nine open cases. There are five dog bites for the month. Animal Control is holding three dogs, one loose dog, one dog left abandoned at the home, one dog involved in a dog and dog attack. The registration deposit for April was $5,530. The management committee continues to make progress on the plan for the Animal Control Building. Animal Control is keeping an eye on the fiscal quarantine situation in the lower cold area and animal control was called out for a donkey wellness check. Johnson is working with state's attorney Jim Devine on an emergency pounding that was done involving 65 animals. 
one bad was turned into ten. There was no old business, there was no new business, and there was no further business to come before the commission. It was moved by Bard and seconded by Bird to join at 9.35 a.m. Both motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its adoption. The motion on the floor to approve the health department health committee report. Is there a second? Are there any questions or comments regarding the report of the health committee? Well, what is the uh, farmers market bill about, and um, are, are we supporting charging people to have farmers markets or? What's going on? I guess it's something we'll have to get you to try and get you a better answer for. I don't know if there's somebody here that can specifically answer it. But the piece of legislation passed out in Springfield. I don't know all the details of the legislation. Any other questions or comments? Can you call the roll, please? Yes. 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 Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to move was referred back slash zoning with beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the administrative center on May 3rd, 2022 at 9.40 a.m. Members present were Bard, Curtis, and also McGinnis and Copenhauer were absent. Also present, County Board Chairman Schur, Treasurer Albert, County Clerk of Super, ICDHD Administrator Dipper, Supervisor of Assessment Irregular, and Ida Director Crawford. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Alpha and seconded by Curtis to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a void vote. The committee reviewed the claim. It was moved by Alpha and seconded by Curtis to pay the claim. Subject to county board approval. The roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. There were no public comments. The department heads gave their monthly report. Treasurer Albert reported tax bills that were returned property tax. Due dates are June 9, 2022 and September 9, 2022. County Clerk Super reported the court's office rolled to the Treasurer's office last week. The extensive portion went fairly well with a few questions in regards to over, overlapping districts. Statements of economic interest were due May 1st. There are 37 forms that have not been returned. These statements will be sent out by certified mail. Super plans to begin ballot proofing today. May 13th is the deadline for military ballots to be sent out. Early voting will start on or before May 9th. There are several candidates that are up for judicial review. These candidates will have up to seven days before the election to file as a write-in candidate. Supervisors are of assessment here will report if he is going to building permit. Yearly Drew's office will have a retirement at the end of June and he'll do a, he will be posting the job position to find a replacement. A decision hasn't made, been made on the zoning administrative, administrative decision. The planning and zoning report for April is distributed to the committee as follows. Building permits, April 2022, agricultural one, Residential five, wind tower zero. Building permits, April 2022. 
residential HD Wind Tower Zero. Building inspectors, April 2022. 19. Ice Director Crawford reported on the 2022 Mayor's Breakfast with Good Iroquois Economic Development Association, IS, and taking the Iroquois Board Association of Realtors, Kaipar. There is no old business, there is new, new business. As there is no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Alpha and seconded by Curtis to adjourn at 10.02 a.m. Motion carried by a voting vote, all of which is respectfully submitted. And I move for its adoption. There's a motion on the floor to approve the tax zoning committee report. Is there a second? Are there any questions or comments regarding the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Excuse? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Chenis? Yes. Sure? Yes. Young? Yes. Zumal? Yes. Alt? Yes. Card? Yes. Barron? Yes. Roger? Yes. Bauer? Yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Initial and public safety, Mr. Barron. Mr. Chairman, a member of the county board has made you to refer to additional public safety as I believe this is a strong report before us. Report on marriage report. Mr. May have had a courthouse on May 4th, 1992 at 3 p.m. Number President Barron, Chief Dog, Bob Hutter, Penny, Captain Young, Staff. Also present, County Board Chairman John Kerr, Charles Spencer Lee, Tony Bill Cheatham, Probation Supervisor Bob King. Judge Mike Stable and ETS Director Eric Brandt. The meeting was called to order. As moved by Paul Utah and second by David Payne to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a vote vote. There were no public comments. Mr. Chair, Mr. Deese presented his monthly report to the committee as follows. Two deputies starting with the Academy today, April 4th, 2022. Two additional part time correctional officers have been trained and are working cover shifts. More part time correctional officers will be hired. Of course, telehealth project is in the works with judges' consultation. Wiring will be done in June when judges are not on the bench. Equipment is ordered. Jail project will be expedited. Medical assistance recovery and AR program is assisting in inmates withdrawal symptoms at house and hospital visits. Addiction recovery services has not found an office location in Wapika and has not been providing any services that have assisted the jail in any form. They are researching it. other options. Your Mental Health has been present on call, on call out for mental health incidents and for office hours at the jail on Wednesday mornings for any inmates wishing to utilize the services. Unused medical pills take back to the DEA program, Sheriff's Association program, and event with Representative Tom Bennett. 233 pounds of medication were collected and disposed of with the DEA. 49 arrests and cases in April. April jail population 29, 18 male, 2 female, and one on ankle bracelet, zero weekenders. April medical, five doctor hospital emergency room visits with 150 mental health visits to the jail, zero lab visits by Iroquois Memorial Hospital. 10 nurse practitioner visits every other Thursday. 14 public health intake exams every Thursday. Zero telephone assessment with your front memorial, hospital nurse practitioner, or MAR, zero dental, dentist visits, one rheumatology visit, and the bonus for appointment to get some fitness. Scale over time for April 2049, part time hours for March 10th. <coughs> Coroner Bill Cheatham reported he received a quote from Larry for the morgue and a bid from the vendor that will supply us with the tool. Cheatham said he will be attending the next ARPA meeting to submit an application for his proposal and would like to move forward with the project. Judge Mike Stable reported they recently had a two week jury term. Stable noted there is a claim for $671.80 being paid 
to choose the corporate system for insurance service. This is reimbursed to the administrative office of the Illinois Court Probation Provider by obtaining review of the probation report first of activity report for April of 2020. You request that a claim be paid to Vermillion County Juvenile Detention Center in the amount of $5,444 past due notice was received and the would like to take the complaint to the state this month. Circuit clerk has signed a monthly report for April was distributed to the committee for a review. DCS Director Eric Raymond reviewed his monthly report with the committee and reported overtime will continue to increase. The current current began on April 19th. Most of the telecommunicators have completed their CPR training to review their CPR position. There was no old business, there was no new business. The committee reviewed the claim that was made by Penny, seconded by DCOS, today the judicial and public safety claim, including the claim to the Million County Juvenile Detention Center in the amount of $5,444. Subject to county board approval, the local law will be paid to Milton Perry. If there is no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by DCOS, seconded by Penny, to adjourn the meeting at 3 15 p.m. Motion carried by a vote of both. All this is respectfully submitted and I move for its adoption. There's a motion on the floor to approve the judicial public safety committee report. Is there a second? Second. Are there any questions or comments regarding the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Yes.
and the one continues to work on improved projects such as battery backup and the disaster <coughs> recovery circuit. Johnson added that the new AC will be installed Tuesday. The cost of the project was $8,067 and is being funded by American Rescue Plan at Harbor Home. The department heads gave their monthly reports. They are as follows. DPS Director Raymond reported his new hire, Aaron Kern, began employment on April 19th. DPS approved the fire suppression system for the server room at their main floor meeting. This is an ETSD project and no county funds will be involved. They also approved the board system. This is due to AT&T's problems with the phone line and extension of the top line in August. There was a grant project plan for a GIS flyover. The state is now doing one large flyover. County Clerk Brian Susan reported to County Clerk's office, wrote to the Treasurer's office last week, and sample tax bills were checked. Susan said she is expecting to receive an invoice for the key fob entry system installation on the election room door and the back door of the clerk's office. She will name the invoice for the board meeting for approval. The invoice is being paid for an election grant and has to be submitted by May 15th. Supervisor of Assessments Bob Nerva reported a retirement in his office at the end of June. The job vacancy has been posted. Treasurer Albert reported property tax bills are printed and will go in the mail on Friday, two days for June 9th and September 9th. EMA Director CC reported he is working on setting up training for fire chiefs and police chiefs for hyperreach, our mass notification system. Last month was Hazardous Materials Safety Month. The EMA Department is working on social media posts for prompt safety. Last week, CC attended the Illinois Emergency. Services Management Association Training Summit and received the O.D. Troutman Outstanding Service to Emergency Management, Management Award. The state has accepted CC's last revision to the Hazard Mitigation Planning Grant and has been submitted to the FEMA. <clears throat> Sheriff Purdue reported the Sheriff's Department has been looking into upgrading the radio session system for the deputies due to safety concerns. They have there have been times when officers are not able to reach ICOM and not having any radio connection with the officers. ICOM is logging instances with no communication or poor communication with officers on portables. There have been 21 instances since April 13th and ICOM often contacts the officers on their cell phone to reestablish contact and check status. Two radio system solutions were tested one did not provide adequate coverage. One was good, but infrastructure needs to be bolstered. So we are looking at grant funding options for officer safety. For officer safety. Phone system upgrade between the sheriff's office jail and the ICOM is the same system as the courthouse and administrative center is moving forward. Free phone monitoring portal which requires additional equipment. This East Coast issue was about panic button improvements in the administrative center. Body cameras are not a requirement until 2025 for our department. The D is researching grants to assist in funding. The D said he would like to see the Sheriff's Department and the Seca Police Department utilize the same vendor to ease the burden on the state's attorney's office. The committee held discussion on the power EMS surplus. The first year of service is 100% reimbursable from ICRMG. As an additional benefit, the county will receive a 15% discount on the ongoing costs and a 10% discount on injury occurring maintenance costs. If it's moved late on the second by all, it's approved the power DMS service for a one year period and reassessed after the year has passed. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. Taggart opened the bid for food service at the jail as follows. Circle Memorial Hospital bid one, based on one cold meal and two hot meals per day. Breakfast, cold meal, food stock by IMH at $4 per meal. Lunch, hot meal delivered by IMH. Staff, daily, larger calorie meal per day at five fifty per meal. Dinner, hot meal delivered by IMH, staff, daily at five 
Pacifica now. Airport Memorial Hospital in Midfield. They run two gold meals and one hot meal per day. Breakfast gold meal food stock by IMH and four dollars per meal. Lunch hot meal delivered by IMH staff daily. Lunch daily meal per day at five fifty per meal. Dinner gold meal delivered by IMH and staff daily when lunch is delivered at five fifty per meal. Airborne Memorial Hospital stated their cost proposal is based on a cost per meal per day basis. The chosen IMH will commit to the <coughs> based on the number of meals served. Meal costs factor in labor delivery costs and one ingredient, the cost of containers, cost of utensils, and cost of condiments. At this time, due to staffing issues, delivering one hot meal per day is the most likely scenario. This may change in the future to allow IMH to provide two hot meals per day. Aramark, current vendor, inmate population 19 and below, 325 per meal. Inmate population 20, 319 per meal. Inmate population 21, 310 per meal. Inmate population 22, 290 per meal. Inmate population 23, 288 per meal. Inmate population 24, 279 per meal. Inmate population 25 and greater, 267 per meal. Johnson stated the current cost of Aramark is Aramark is three fifty three per meal. Would be added that if IMH is selected, they will not need to use our kitchen or any of the appliances and would save us money and maintenance costs. Would be said there has been an ongoing issue of Aramark staffing, and there have been times when several days will pass before an employee arrives with meals. When this situation occurs, that's food for the inmates is purchased using funds from commissary. <coughs> maintenance costs in the jail kitchen are about are at eleven hundred dollars per year. It was moved by Ms. Taggart and seconded by Young. Table actually in food service service until next month. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims that was moved by Gates and seconded by Curtis to pay the claims subject to accountable approval. The roll call bill was taken. Motion carried. There was no old vote. During new business, Young suggested burning the party of Harry White attend quarterly meetings due to the finance and IT committee being merged. And there was no further business come before the committee. It was moved by Bowers and seconded by Young to adjourn at 9.51 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted and under the current approval. Motion on the floor to approve the finance IT committee report. Is there a second? Powers. Are there any questions or comments regarding the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Sure. Yes. Young. Yes. Young. Yes. 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 Upper committee report, Mr. Duquette. Mr. Chair, I'm member of the county board and committee room to refer to Harpo would beg to leave to submit the following report on the matter before the committee met in the center on May 6, 2022. At 2 and 3 a.m., members present were Duquette, also pro, also and sure, also present, finance manager Bill Johnson, EMA director of the county engineer Bill Moore, former Bill Chino, Captain Williams, Diane Gagnon, and Stephanie Bowers of the Harpo County Sports Society. Beverly Poster Easter and Corey Clinton with the Garage Community Center, Damon Schultz and with the Martin and Drain District Number Three, John and Monica with Addiction Recovery Services and County Board Members Paul Bowers and John Zumwalt. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Sure, seconded by Awful to amend the agenda to review EMA Director. Stacy's application first, motion carried by a voice vote. It was moved by Awful and seconded by Charlie to approve and amend this agenda. Motion was carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. The committee began their review of the ARPA application as follows. Application number 78, Airplane County Emergency Management Agency, EMA Director Eric Stacy submitted an application in the amount of $26,868 to allow for technology updates to the Iroquois County Emergency Operations Center. Stacy also intended to replace the projection system with an interactive board 
the two television monitors, replace whiteboards, replace the older computer, upgrade radio communications, replace the television monitors, and do some electrical upgrade. The committee requested Stacy to obtain two quotes for each item. They will review the application further once the quotes have been reviewed. Application number 45, the Airport County Highway Department, County Engineer Joel Moore initially requested $265,000 for the County Highway sign replacement project. Moore provided quotes for the committee for the signs and the posts with a total of $240,564.04. It was moved by Sure and seconded by Donna Crow to adopt the resolution approving Airport County Highway Department's application the amount of Service is staying, they are serving severance plans in the area. 
committee would like to see more advancement with the judges and our court system Johnson also requested a more detailed outline of what the funds will be used for pros just their application be tabled until later a later date due to the status of our current funding application number 27 health check health check has requested 45,000 and has provided the required documentation it was moved by crow and seconded by awful to adopt a resolution approving health checks application the amount of seven thousand one hundred two dollars for the loss of revenue at roll call vote was taken motion carried the committee discussed further meeting dates due to conflicting schedules going forward our committee will meet on monday after the main committee at 10 a.m there was no old business there was no new business if there was no further business to come before the committee it was moved by crow and second by office to adjourn at 12 35. motion carried by voice vote all which is respectfully submitted and i move this adoption Motion on the floor to approve the upper committee report. Is there a second? For you. Are there any questions or comments regarding the report? <coughs> yes, would <coughs> the coroner it said, uh, well, obviously it's 250000 in cash, but is that going to be the amount that will be approved or <coughs> is it being held in abeyance until you get all the final figures? Okay. was for an amount not to exceed $250,000. So if it were under, the money would stay. <coughs> the money would stay. If it was over, they'd have to come back and ask for more. <coughs> to allow the project to move forward. And that's not what it says in the minutes. Well, I, I do believe that's what the motion has. It doesn't say that in the minutes. I understand, and I agree with that. But I do believe that's what the motion You want to correct the minutes? I think they were recorded. I think we could verify that easily. And Mrs. Opal isn't here, but I, I remember sitting by her and we had a little side discussion. I'm going to make the motion that, as a member of the committee, that we separate that out, that whole paragraph for application number 92. I think there's some things that were done there that are not in accordance rules from the United States Treasury Department which requires us to have two witness votes before awarding any money. You can see in the minutes here where the committee has followed that with other applications. I'm not sure why it was decided to deviate from that, but to me that's not in there. My motion would be to separate that out. <coughs> questions or comments on the motion? None, we can call the vote, please. Second. No. Sure. Yes. Young. Yes. Greenwald. Yes. Hall. Yes. Bard. Yes. Barron. Yes. Bodger. Yes. Bowers. Yes. Crow. No. Curtis. Yes. Kuzak. Yep. Hughes. Yes. <coughs> okay, there have been some discussions about this whole project. I don't believe anybody is against the project. I think it's a very important and necessary project. The question has to do with not only conforming to the interim rules established by the United States Treasury and the use of ARPA funds, but also what is the right way to go about doing something? I think that one of the things that we can establish here today is making a 
a motion as to how we want to proceed. I have a suggestion, and then someone wants to make a motion to adopt that suggestion, I'll be fine with it. My suggestion would be for Mr. Barron, who's the chairman of the Finance Committee. My, and, excuse me, and myself to meet with the coroner and with Mr. Mahoney and establish some specifications and some plans for the building. These can then be submitted to the management committee for their concurrence. They can be submitted to the ARPA committee for their approval. And then we can go out for bids. And once those bids are received, then money can be appropriated. I think this is a logical way to do it. I think it's the correct and legal way to do it. So that's my suggestion. And I will entertain a motion from someone if they agree that that's what we ought to do. Mr. Hughes makes the motion. Are you seconding Mr. Strong? No, I'm not. I disagree. Well, I'm looking for a second. Yes, I am. <coughs> They're all seconds. Are there any questions or comments? Mrs. Pro. Well, I disagree with you at the ARPA meeting about that, and I disagree with you today. Um, we've worked on several projects in management, and I think the committee can work together. I think that it's wrong for this not to proceed as a committee project. And, and there's some overlap with two committees here. Uh, the motion includes both committees being involved in this, correct? Yes, I heard that. But it's still not the way it should go. The committee should be involved, the whole committee. Uh, I believe the motion made it to involve both committees. I don't understand why you The said. entire committee. You selected certain members of the committee. No, I, I, the motion is for, people, for the preparation of specifications. Are you proposing that all the members of both committees meet together? No, you're not. No. That's my point. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't believe that's the right way to go about it. Well, I would just say in the past in talking to the state's attorney, he has said that it is a legitimate way to do things to meet outside of committees in special circumstances in order to move projects forward as long as it goes through the committees. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that's what he would say in this instance, but that's my recollection of what he has said in the past. Well, we don't have any and he's not to... here to ask. He had to leave, apparently, but um, yeah, and that's because it, it does become you know, if you're trying to get 10 people to sit down and agree on the color of paint in a building, it gets to be unwieldy. I mean, so that's where in the past it's been thought appropriate to go ahead and get things gathered together outside the committee and then bring them to the committee. It's also a task for a small number of people to promote their personal wants and agendas. No, that's not correct. It, it'll it still go to the committee. Yes. If you don't have a starting point, you don't get anywhere. This is a starting point. We haven't had a starting point all along, and it's changed and changed and changed and changed because people have gone a separate path to promote their own agenda outside the meeting. Okay. Well, we can argue all day and we're yes, not going to agree with you. I think that's the case. Is there anyone else that has any comments on the motion? Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to say that, you know, that we're kind of in uncharted waters because we haven't been to a building in a long time. But I think we deserve to be, get the very best product for the people of Iroquois County. And, uh, I think when you have kind of just a, a, a dollar figure out there, I think we need to be more specific as far as what right now as much as we can with fixtures and other things uh, to last a long time for the people of the Fort County. And uh, I think the more specific we can get on a bid, the more accurate the price will be. And, And, and there's nothing here that's, that, really, you know, that the management committee won't have every opportunity to review what, what Mr. Barron's and I would come up with, along with Mr. Mahoney and Mrs. Hughes. It's just a matter of trying to expedite the process. And things can be changed with the committee.
things are up to the board. That's the way we operate. That's the way we've always operated. Nothing is here that's anything unusual in our mind. If there's no further questions or comments, we call the vote, please. Sir? Yes. Young? Yes. DeWalt? Yes. Salt? Yes. Bard? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bodger? Yes. Bauer? Yes. <coughs> Crow? No. Curtis? Yes. Dupat? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Guinness? Yes. And Penny? Yes. Okay, so I think that takes care of the application on the corner and then we can go to the rest of the report. There are no further comments or questions about the rest of the report. Young? Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Bard? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bacher? Yes. Bowers? Yes. <coughs> Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Guinness? Yes. Penny? Yes. And Sir? Yes. <coughs> okay. Highway Committee, Mr. Alt.
system has been installed. The alarm system is in the process of being installed. There is a seven or eight dollar annual fee for the alarm system. The system that alerts the sheriff department along with his designated employees. The cost of inspection includes the first year of monitoring is $27,028. There is no new business. There is no old business. If there was no further business, we could tell the proposed committee to be moved by Gun and seconded by the staff to adjourn at 925 a.m. Motion carried by the board to vote. I will respectfully submit to the adoption of this report. There's a motion on the floor to approve the highway department report. Is there a second? That's a good day. Are there any questions or comments regarding the highway department? Now the clerk will call the roll, please. Zoom off. Off. Yes. Bard. Yes. Barron. Yes. Slasher. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Ducat. Yes. Hughes. Yes. McGinnis. Yes. Honey. Yes. Sir. Yes. Young. Yes. Okay. Next on the agenda is approving the appointment. Special enactment on the joint funding agreement and funding resolution for Charlie Highway 42 Bridge. I, uh, I'll take that, Charlie. I got uh, it's it's our typical uh, agreement that we have with the federal uh, with the state for our federal funds for a bridge. Uh, it's a bridge uh, what we refer to as Thompson Corner at Fort County Highway 42 and, and 40. Uh, it's it's an agreement that will pay 20 percent of the bridge costs. The uh, federal uh, funds will be 80 percent. And along with that, there's also a resolution for, I believe, uh, 100,000, isn't it, uh, grant, which is our portion of this. I can't remember off the top of my head. I have it uh, yeah. So this is the typical. We normally run it through our the, the committee. Unfortunately, uh, the state didn't get our the uh, draft agreement to us till uh, I think uh, Thursday morning. And so it didn't allow us to go through the normal committee so I can bring it for the full board because we have to have it before they advertise, uh, which they're advertising for next month for the project. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. Questions or comments about the resolution? Seeing none, call the roll. All? Yes. Bard? Yes. Barron? Yes. Spotter? Yes. Bowers? Yes. yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Ducat? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Penny? Yes. Sir? Yes. Young? Yes. Okay, next thing on the agenda is approving the appointments and listed on the point of view, so we have a motion to do that. Okay, second by Mr. Bauer. Any questions or comments on the appointments? If none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, say sign. That motion passes the claim. Everyone will send a copy of the claim. In addition to which, I've been handed some claims that did not make the list ahead of time, I guess. Okay. One is for the Ava Grant the equipment here for the audio video system so I'm going to see behind county clerk for the key fob entry and the office. What? It's for the key fob entry and the office. That's not what it says here. I'm sorry, I guess I can't read the page here. Very clear. 
Both of these are, are for the, in the county clerk's office. One is eight thousand seventy-one dollars and ninety-seven cents. The other is for thirty-two dollars and twenty-three cents. In addition, there's a claim here from the probation department for five thousand four hundred and forty dollars, which I believe was already approved in the judicial committee this morning. So I'm not sure why I have this here separately, but I just need you to sign it. Mr. Barrett forgot to sign it. Uh, that's what I was told, is, is it needed to be signed. It wasn't presented at judicial in paper copy, but Barb explained that there's going to be one. We had it emailed, so it needs so to be signed. these are in addition to what you were mm -hmm. already received, so we'll entertain a motion to approve the claim. Mr. Barr, is there a second? Mr. Ducare. Are there any other questions or comments regarding the claim? Yes. 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 Yes.